Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Archie and his staff um, on a uh, well-played game. Uh, certainly a, a coach and um, you know, a former player uh, who has a lot of talent on his roster and was a very good player in his own right. So to be able to stand on the sideline next to uh, Coach Miller and his staff, certainly an honor and a uh, privilege for, uh, for our guys. Um, and to the, the great people here in Indiana, our stay has been fantastic. Uh, what an opportunity for our guys to come in and compete against one of the most storied programs in college basketball history and one of the most storied arenas. It's a pretty special experience for our guys and for the coaches. It's uh, uh, something that we see on TV and to be able to come in here and, and compete against, against these guys in a great university uh, is something that I know our guys will remember. And to the people at the NIT for making this experience for our guys, awesome. Uh, something our, our university hasn't done in 60 years, and certainly the history of, of St. Francis basketball dates back to when the NIT was the premier tournament. And uh, you know, something our guys I know have embraced, and the, and the many of alums that are out there that have followed this team uh, you know, during the season. Certainly, uh, thank you to them and to all the people back at St. Francis. You know, it's it's been a fun ride with these guys um, for for 33 games. They gave St. Francis University and the coaching staff everything they had. Um, pl proud of the way they came out and competed the first 20 minutes, and you know certainly there for the first part of the uh, the second half before Indiana was was able to run away with it. But um, you know for our guys, for our seniors, the five guys that you know put on the uniform for the last time, um, you know proud of the way they represented the university, and certainly a uh, an experience we'll never forget. Rob, you came in here and had the lead mm -hmm. at the half. What does that specific thing mean to this team and to St. Francis? You know, I told the guys in the locker room, you know, probably four or five years ago in games like this, we would have kept it close for, you know, maybe the first media, uh, maybe the second media. But of the five games that we played this year um, in, you know, the, the Power Five conferences, and if you include Buffalo in that mix, in every one of those five games, uh, our guys were in it for more than just the first media timeout. You know, and as a coach, you want to come in and win one of these games. It's it's certainly something that you know, you, you have on the bucket list. But where the program has come from you know, to just being close, maybe in the first media to in each one of these five games, being around for a lot longer, and I, it's a credit to the staff and, and to the guys in that that locker room that really weren't you know phased by the atmosphere or by the opponent. They came out and competed 94 by 50, and uh, you know certainly gave us everything that uh, that they had. And one more thing, if you can, um, you've built a program now that's been successful for four or five years in a row, not just one team. What does that mean to St. Francis to have a lot of these guys back, maybe be picked to win? What does it mean to, to be part of a strong program as opposed to just having one good team every now and then? And that's important. You know, we, we talked about that you know, way back in day one, that we wanted to build a program that was going to be around and not, you know, get to the top and then have to rebuild every couple of years. And uh, we've been fortunate to, to have some really good players in the program that have embraced not just what we've asked of them as a basketball player, but as students and as people at St. Francis. And you know, the, the goal of, uh, of the program is to continue to get a little bit better every day. We ask our guys to do that you know, one game at a time and in practice to practice, but from season to season, we want to make sure that we see progress um, in a positive direction. Sometimes they're not always measurable and sometimes it doesn't always happen on the court, but you know, it's certainly a, an exciting group that's coming back and the bar's been set high by that senior class and uh, anxious to see how this, this group responds and, and the challenges that they'll face. Uh, certainly the, the seniors have set that bar high and set a great example for those young kids to follow. Mike and then Steve. Yeah, is uh, the challenges of a big talented uh, guy like a Juwan Morgan, is that the biggest issue you face when you come up against a Power 5 school like you did tonight? Yes, because um, a lot of times they have more than one, and uh, you know, and certainly his career. I mean, he's a senior, you know, an experienced guy too that, that knows how to play angles. As you can tell he's well coached, and um, you know, knows how to play to his strengths. And uh, but I think it's a good thing though for our post players to see. It, it, it's something that they can you know they can learn from someone like that. You know, as tough as it is in the moment, those are things as coaches we can go back and say, hey, see how he did it. But a lot of times when you get to this level and you play those games, yes, that's the, that's the biggest challenge. After earning CIT bids in each of the last two seasons and then getting an NIT bid this year, just how valuable is that experience for your program, particularly this year with the NIT? 
It's important. You know, it, it, certainly every kid, you know, when they, when they, when they watch college basketball this time of year, um, they, they want to play in March Madness. You know, and March Madness has a lot of different um, versions. You know, the CIT and, and the NIT and, and the NCAA. You know, to be able to play in postseason basketball is exciting because you're one of a few teams that are left playing college basketball in the middle of March. The great thing for us is, you know, we're, we're practicing and it's still light out. Th those, those, are, those are great things. And for those of you that don't know Loretto, Pennsylvania, there's not much snow on the ground this time of year. So the weather's starting to turn. And, you know, for our guys, that's exciting. You know, and, and to be able to play in postseason, I don't know, you know, three of the last four, whatever the numbers are, that's a credit to those guys. You know, and, and in order to do that, you have to have a winning record. And we, we played some tough non-conference opponents. And for our guys to stick with it through some tough non-conference schedules and, and put ourselves in a position to be in postseason is a credit to them. You mentioned how special it is to play at a place like Assembly Hall. What, yeah. what were some of the reactions of the guys on the team when they walked in here for the first time? You know, it's it's neat to see those reactions. You, know, I as a as a parent, you know, I look at I have eighteen kids, I have two kids at home, and I have eighteen on that roster. I have twenty kids, right? And so when you see your kids do anything, and you see the joy, it's pretty cool. Whether you, you know. Kids like to go on a water slide, you know, or they go to an amusement park. You know, when they come into a place like this, we always try to get here early so that they can do all the, you know, the, the banner looking and kind of film all the stuff that's going around because it's something they'll, they'll never forget. They'll, they'll never forget coming in and, and playing on the same court that some of the greatest basketball players ever to play the game played on. And they'll be able to go back and, and 10 years from now, 15 years from now, they'll remember that we competed. But the memories that they have from this year of being able to play here and at the, at the Dean Dome and at Poly Pavilion and last year Cameron and being able to play in those environments, it's a special experience. Because it's what college basketball is all about. You know, we, we grow up seeing those kids and those, those, those programs and the TV and to be able to come and experience it firsthand, it's awesome. It, it's, it's a great, and especially when the people are so welcoming. You know, they allow us to do some of those neat things to, to soak in the environment. What can you say about that? Uh, Jamal's play in the first half and the whole game. It's typical Jamal. You know, I, I don't know that I've coached a, a more competitive kid. And, and to see where he's come, come from, you know, where he came in as a freshman and where he is now as a player and as a person, it's, you know, when, when you hear the saying, good things happen to good people, um, he's, he's right in that, right there by that, that definition in the dictionary. You know, uh, to see him have that kind of performance on this kind of stage uh, does not surprise me. He's not afraid. Uh, he's the ultimate competitor. And uh, he's, he's a big part of why the program is where it is right now because of his willingness to stick with us, um, to challenge guys to be better. And, and as I said before, the, the best thing that this team did all year is that they were close. It's the closest team, that, I, and it's Jamal King that's responsible for that. So, you know, th those things as a coach, you want to want to be a part of every year. But knowing that Jamal was w was a big part of getting us here and then the success that he had tonight and in the championship game, it's a credit to the work that he's put in and, and who he is as a person. All right. Thank you, Coach. Absolutely. Thank you.